This man is an industry legend. He has the, uh, he's the only person who has given five consecutive keynotes here at Lendit. But he's, not, um, he's, he's also someone who really cares deeply about the industry. He cares personally about the industry. He speaks about it all over the world every year. I know one week ago he was back in my hometown of Sydney, Australia, giving a, giving a talk about, about uh, fintech. And we are delighted to have him here today. He is someone who represents the whole industry, not just Prosper. He has made numerous investments um, in all different kinds of verticals in the industry. He is someone that people look to now for advice all the time. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the president of Prosper, Ron Suba. Legend. Thank you very much. It is absolutely my honor to represent Prosper and my privilege to represent you all, this industry, and what we're doing. As Peter said, I gave 80 presentations around the world last year and talked about how we're modernizing and changing and improving banking and lending and finance and wealth management. And we're also doing brand new things the world has never seen before. We have garnered the attention of the banks, of the exchanges, of the venture capital and private equity companies, and the individuals around the world looking for our solution as borrowers and investors across consumer and student loans and small business and real estate, franchise, insurance, and more. Something happened to me four days ago in Sydney that has not happened in my five years in this industry. I was talking to a very large bank, and he stopped me, and he said, I get it. I have the education, awareness, and understanding of what you're doing and why you're doing it, but how do we work together? And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to go through the five ways we all can work together with the banks that I shared with this bank. When I talk to people about Prosper and us and you and what we're doing together around the world, I ask them if they missed the ETF revolution. And they say, yes, we did. We thought it was a fad. We thought it wasn't global. We thought it really wasn't a product that would make sense to so many. And I tell these people, don't miss us, because we too, you and Prosper, and all of us around the world, will be ubiquitous, like ETFs, everywhere, products and solutions. We've heard a lot of speakers today talk about the journey, our journey. And so I'm going to take one minute and talk about this past year. What did it take to go from last year's Lendit to today? It took the patience of a monk. It took the speed and agility and cunningness of a leopard. And it took the stamina of Rocky Balboa. I watched the first Rocky, I watched the sacrifice, I watched the training, I watched the punches he took and the pain, and it was excruciating, but he answered the bell for every round. And so did you, and so did we. And if you don't feel proud about what we're doing here today, you should. We should be energized and excited about the opportunity ahead. Congratulations to everyone in this industry. So I'm going to take a quick look back for those of you that weren't at the original Lendits. What did we talk about and get into where is Prosper today, where is the banks, and share with you the five things I've learned from the industry in taking a poll of the things we should be working on and thinking about together, and then share with you the one thing I know for sure that I didn't know a year ago. So at the very first Lendit, there were 300 of us sitting in a room and we were trying to explain that we, as a world, were moving from this sharing economy where we shared pictures and emails and photos and music to this access economy with Uber and Airbnb, and that we were the same. We were connecting people for the very first time who never could connect before, retail investors and borrowers and institutions and borrowers. I showed this picture, and I said, don't focus on the little pie. Let's work together and tell our story and make a big pie. And when it's big, we can fight over the pieces 
but let's not fight today. And the one thing I said that got picked up in the press more than anything else five years ago was that the competition was not in the room that day, that we weren't competing against each other. We were competing against something called E, A, and U. And that was the lack of education, awareness, and understanding of what we were doing. In 2014, we moved to San Francisco, and we started to talk about the democratization of credit, how we were really helping people with their own balance sheets and their own FICO scores, and that we were kind of reaching this tipping point. Either we were going to make it or not. Either we were going to go big or not. And people kept saying, where are we? What inning are we in? And I argued that we were really just in the bottom of the first inning, even though people had been doing this business for five years. In 2015, I introduced the concept that each of us, each marketplace, each balance sheet lender, whether you were peer-to-peer -peer or institutional, we were three-legged stools. The right leg was the borrower. The left leg was the liability side, the capital market side, the peer-to-peer -peer side. And I took a poll and showed the industry's big, hairy, audacious goals, the 10 things that we wanted to do one day. And we did nine of them. You can go back and watch the YouTube to see what they were. But it was AAA ratings. It was multiple securitizations with multiple agencies. It was volume. It was quality. It was making it through an interest rate change and an unemployment change. And that concept of escape velocity that Scott mentioned, absolutely, we were trying to lift off as an industry, as companies, past that point of gravity where the incumbents knew that we were here to stay, that we were big enough that we would, they would care. All right, so quick, last year, for the first time, we saw some skepticism from the press, from ourselves, from the banks, the leverage providers. Were we really trustworthy and transparent? I issued the necessary nine for fund investors of the nine things that every investor had to do to be compliant, to really raise assets. And each of those nine things were difficult to do. And you saw some investors struggle with performance given their inability to follow all nine of the necessary things. I also told a story last year about Boeing. And I equated Boeing to us, that Boeing in 2013 had the batteries that smoked and went on fire. The stock got cut in half. The press turned against them. This whole supply chain of the airline industry changed. And that industry got together to fix it. So people would fly, would lease, would buy the planes. And the whole ecosystem got together. And we did too, which is another great thing that we should feel proud about. The Marketplace Lending Association and the groups that the small business community has put together have enabled us to heal, to return to the trust and transparency and the promise that we all have given to ourselves, our investors, and the borrowers. So I think we're building an industry that's built to last. This comes from my favorite book from Jim Collins, a famous author, about building to last. And to last, we're going to have to do five things that I'm going to share with you that I shared in Australia to work with the banks. And Scott and Rob and other people have touched on it, but I'm going to go just a little bit deeper. Efficiency and profitability. We must, as an industry, as companies, as platforms, start generating cash. And we must find long-term capital. And these are things that, under the new leadership of David Kimball, we've been able to do at Prosper, is to become a profitable company, to find the secured long-term capital, and make Prosper a company as part of this industry built to last. OK, so when I talked to this big bank guy, one of the top four banks in Australia, he said, how do we do this? What are my options? What's the best way? What's the worst way? I'll pick one. Just lay them out for me. So here they are. Here's the banks, first of all. And the beautiful thing is we used to show this slide and point to the slide. And now we can point to the crowd because the banks are here to understand, really, how to work with us, which of the five ways. So welcome to the banks. Here they are. You see it today where many banks are buying the double A's, A's, or B's, or A, B's, and C's, the top one-third of our credit book. And they're doing it in a passive way. They're loving it. It's adding yield and interest to their balance sheets. As long as the marketplace, the platform, the balance sheet lender, the online lender can meet the requirements of the bank's regulators. 
This has been hard. We probably weren't ready as an industry three years ago, but at Prosper, we've spent tons of money and hired tons of people from the regulatory agencies and the banks to help us be compliant and help those banks be comfortable with us as counterparties in our uh, vendor requirements and our security requirements and so many other things that the bank have, we must meet the requirements of their regulators. The second option is this, and you're hearing a lot about this, companies raising money to pivot from online lenders to lenders as a service or white label private marketplaces where we connect to the banks. It's the bank's website, the bank's brand, but it comes to us, the online lenders, in a software development kit. It's our credit model, it's usually our servicing, and the bank funds it, enabling the banks, again, to work with their regulators. You're gonna see a lot more from this industry with this. You will see platforms pivot or add to their service, lending as a service. Some banks don't want one or two, they really just want this option. They really just wanna be underneath us. They wanna leverage our loans, they wanna securitize our loans, they wanna hold the cash from the people and the institutions and the balance sheet, or just be trustees working with the investors and the platforms. The fourth one is the mergers and acquisition possibility. It's the entrepreneur's dream that somebody, a tech, fintech, or bank, acquires these companies and gets the advantages to use their low cost of capital and get all the innovation and the creativity and the brand that we offer. And the fifth one just happened last year. And that's where a bank says, we're gonna put up hundreds of millions of dollars, take years, hire hundreds of people, and do this ourselves. How hard can this be? And the reality is, what we do is hard. Keeping the legs in balance, in equilibrium, and working every day. So when we talk to banks, these are the five ways. There are others, and there will be other ways. That's the picture I showed the banker in Sydney. So it's been a fascinating 10 years for Prosper. We've had a lot going on. We are building a platform that will last for a long time, a 100-year company. And we're doing it by focusing on risk and pricing and the process on our operational excellence, our verification and validation and servicing, and our conversion ratio of listing to loan. And we have a mission, and we're driven by that mission every day. And we remind ourselves why we come to work and do what we do. In December of last year, we rolled out PMI7, the seventh generation of the Prosper Credit model. It's got more data, more sources of data, new things we do with the data, and it's enabled us to grow in originations, in quality, in return, every single month from July. This is the chart I think you should ask for, the receiver operator chart. Show me as an investor in each platform, if you just lent on FICO or some out there industry score, how much better are you and your iteration in each of your risk models? I think this is really critical for the platforms to show. We've spent so much time on verification, making sure that we're able to eliminate the stacking and the shotgunning and some of the fraud things that are there for every bank, for every lender. And again, efficiency, growth, and profitability. Not growth for growth's sake, but growth to be profitable and to deliver the returns we've estimated for our investors. And we're finding ways to automate everything we do. It's absolutely critical. I'm very proud of this chart. I've been buying loans from this industry now for seven years, and I look for this number in the bottom right-hand corner from every platform I see I invest in, debt or equity. And that's the number that the platform says it estimates will be the net return for the forward one-year period after defaults and fees. And is this platform, is this lender able to generate a number in the circle in the bottom right-hand corner that's better than everything else I can find with similar risk, duration, and liquidity in the scale that we're looking for. This is driving so many investors to prosper. This number is up more than 100 basis points from just one year ago. So our whole mission, the thing we're trying to do, is to advance the financial well-being of our borrowers and our investors. 
and to deliver products that help them with their balance sheet, help them with their lives, help them with their FICO score, and to generate these profitable assets for our investors and a profitable company to prosper for our investors. And oh yeah, there was this thing in the paper last week. We are so happy and proud to work with this consortium where we are teammates, where we are aligned, where we have the ability to now do these beautiful securitizations, which will start in the second quarter. This is an interesting chart. We talked a little bit last year about the previous Prosper securitizations. They have performed beautifully. They're nowhere near the triggers. Not one of them was actually downgraded by any rating agency, in spite of some of the news you read. We're very proud of this, and the investors who bought these securitizations from Prosper, their expectations have been exceeded. And we're looking forward to coming out again in the second quarter with PMIT, the Prosper Marketplace Indenture Trust securitization, with our partners in the consortium. So when I took the poll of the industry, I said, what are the five things I should share, not just about Prosper, but about our industry? This is it. This is kind of the takeaway for the rest of 2017. It's loan performance. It's the ability to estimate losses and generate the returns and hit that number in the bottom right-hand corner in the circle through the cycle, through the upcoming rate changes and Fed rate increases that we all expect. It's about transparency. Are we sharing our data from ourselves to the investors, but also to the ecosystems, to the orchards and DVO1s and peer IQs and alt fives and e-originals and all of these other groups that are helping us establish trust and transparency and alt fi and all of these groups helping us compare in an independent way our performances as platforms to the end investors. To generate cash, to not be negative, to not burn as a platform. Every single platform's gotta figure this piece out because the days of just growing originations per month and having okay unit economics but never, ever being able to break even are over. And customer acquisition, it's really about this. How do we acquire these customers in a unique way, in a different way, with a cost per acquisition and a CAC that makes sense for all of us to run these businesses and get these people, these borrowers, across consumer and student loans and mortgages to come back again and again and to be our customers for life? And again, it's about automation. The need to hire people is always going to be critical. We have the best group of talented people at Prosper and in this industry than we ever have but we need to introduce automation even more. So what is the one thing that I can share with you today that I know for sure that I didn't know last year? It's this, it's this quote from Jim Collins about building companies and building industries to last. It's that the only reliable source of stability is a strong inner core and the willingness to change and adapt in everything except our core belief and our mission. What we're doing is not easy. Innovation's really hard, but execution is even harder. I hope you feel the same excitement and engagement and gratitude and pride in what we're doing in our industry. I think one day we will be everywhere, globally, around the world. Let's together build an industry built to last. Thank you very much. Thank you.